There's one rule I live by, and it's simple. Protect the health, safety, and welfare of your hood. As an architect, this isn't just a part of my job, it's my calling. The spaces we create don't just define our communities, they shape our experiences and set the stage for who we are. Ultimately, it impacts how we choose to contribute to society. To protect the environment, you must show up as yourself, bring your experiences and tangibles to the forefront. Today, I wanna to take you on a journey of authenticity and the importance of staying true to oneself. When I first stepped into the world of architecture, it didn't take long to see that traditional paths didn't quite fit who I was or where I came from. I labeled myself as a rebel and was passionate about challenging the narrative of traditional architecture. As I navigated through this field, it became clear to me that my role in architecture wasn't just to create spaces, it was to show up as myself. I was born and raised on the southwest side of Houston, Texas, surrounded by history and a deep sense of community. My grandfather, Dr. Romanuel Washington Jr., was the first black chiropractor in the state of Texas. He loved people, and through his example, I learned the importance of understanding the connections we share with those around us. This foundation was laid early, and it became the basis upon which I built my career. My father poured his energy into renovating our home, tearing down walls, rebuilding spaces, and always striving to create something better. He was like so many others in our neighborhood, just wanting a nice place to live. Watching him tear down walls wasn't just about construction. It was about creating something better for the people who mattered most to him. His dedication to, towards creating something instilled in me a drive that would carry me towards a different path. It was this subliminal message that started to design my next steps. In 2016, I found myself in Miami, working on high profile buildings in the design district. And by 2020, I had completed a whirlwind of projects. Aesop, Tom Brown, Blue Dot, The Oasis, Doral Sanctuary, and many more. But even in this whirlwind of opportunity and growth, something was missing. A lot of time, money, and effort went into these projects, but I couldn't shake the feeling that they lacked deeper meaning. I didn't see how these projects truly benefited the community in a meaningful way, and that left me searching for more. I wanted to contribute to architecture that makes a difference in people's lives, not just in terms of aesthetics or luxury, but in a way that impacts community and fosters genuine connection through improvement. The work wasn't connecting to me personally, and this sparked a realization that was deeper to create something where I could truly serve the public. After receiving my master's in architecture, I started my company, Yen Design Studio, which brought its own set of successes and quickly gained recognition along the way. From winning project manager of the year to receiving numerous awards and being recognized as a minority woman in architecture, I was an emerging professional boldly carving out a niche that didn't fully understand at the time. I was being merged within so many spaces and I found that bringing my unique experiences, personality, and vision to the forefront was my way of expanding. And it wasn't just about finding a market opportunity, it was about creating one. In 2022, I was invited by the National Science Foundation to participate in a program that was eager to blend science and architecture, to challenge architects to think beyond buildings, but rather the environment. It was important I leveraged the latest technological advances to drive affordability and sustainability. The use of tools like 3D printing and robotics is gaining a lot of recognition, but I wanted to focus on the intention and reason for these tools, to use these technologies for the greater good. Although I always rejected the traditional path, I did not reject the need to elevate in such a competitive field. I was always open to opportunities and challenges of technology and innovation, as it's these spaces that need diversity the most. I realized that great architecture doesn't have to mean expensive buildings, and at its core, architecture is about shelter, and everyone deserves a great design. To bring about meaningful change, I knew I had to go beyond the building and look into how we build. This realization led me to incorporate material science. I saw an opportunity to create a local building material that could reduce the cost of construction for my neighborhood. Understanding that construction is one of the largest contributors to environmental impact, concrete alone accounts for 8% of CO2 emissions worldwide, and I made it my mission to address not just the design and aesthetics, but also the environmental impacts created from the way we build. Among the strategies to tackle this issue, the use of supplementary materials is becoming increasingly important. I've now dedicated my time to developing a local material for South Florida, 
one that can lower the cost of simple structures and contribute to a healthier market. I'm creating a building material out of waste that can be used to make modular components, aiding in construction while also being environmentally friendly. With the help of digital fabrication, I plan to advance this material, ensuring that it is not only cost effective, but also aesthetically pleasing for the communities that will use it. By combining architecture and design and science with my national passions for community, I will not only be set apart, but also drive meaningful change in the communities I serve through representation. This blending of disciplines is where my innovation happens. It's where I choose to bring all my experiences, perspectives, challenges, passions, and goals together, merging paths that others overlook. As a minority in this space, I have the pleasure to be able to think critically for the needs of others, not just for the advancement of technology. Creative thinking allows architects to understand why we build and whom we are truly building for, to consider, learn, and understand the local environment. Hands-on work and connection is an essential skill. This is about more than just innovative buildings. It's about making high quality, sustainable architecture affordable and accessible to everyone, especially those who look like me. It's about using the latest advancements in science and technology to drive social change and address issues like housing, environmental sustainability, and resource scarcity. Despite my achievements, I realized I had only ever worked with one black architect and none of the clients looked like me. This is what was missing, and this led to the creation of the Neighborhood Architects, a passion project born out of the desire to bridge the gap between people and minority architects. The Neighborhood Architects opened an uncharted path in my career, and while buying back the block and ownership have become popular missions, minority architects and designers are rarely engaged in these conversations. The Neighborhood Architects was created to build a, be a resource for the public to create and locate their neighborhood architects and educate citizens on how architects serve the public through design. It is about creating a space where the public, architects, and the creative community can connect and collaborate to impact neighborhoods for the better. Through the hood, I've been able to bring together my passion for architecture, community, and innovation, creating a lane that not only sets me apart, but also address addresses the unique challenges faced by the built environment. I wanted to intertwine supplementary paths with my tangibles and interests to reach higher than the traditional accomplishments that come with architecture, which is licensure. Licensure is one of the most challenging and sought out accolades architects have. Many African American architects, as well as myself, aim to raise the number of licensed professionals, as there are only 2,582 licensed African American architects in the U.S. today. But I also wanted more. What happens after licensure? What real changes can I make beyond architectural projects? What other spaces can broaden my capabilities and continuously allow me to stand out in this profession? By staying true to myself, never being stagnant, and constantly pushing the boundaries of what architecture can be, I'm not just building structures. I'm building a future where everyone has a place, can be seen, and can use their experiences to create a better future. It is the people around you who you impact the most. It starts in your local community and by being the example. The journey of finding and expanding your niche is one of authenticity, passion, and purpose. It's about showing up in spaces where you might be the only one who looks like you, about challenging the status quo, and about creating a market where one didn't exist before. It's about connecting with your upbringing, understanding the needs of your community, and leveraging your unique experiences to make a meaningful impact. Greetings, I am Terry Watson, owner of Yen Design Studio, creative director of the Neighborhood Architects, and doctorate of design candidate and fellow for the National Science Foundation, Center for Aquatic Chemistry, Institute of Environment, and Radcliffe Art and Design Incubation. Thank you.